Hi, this is Matt Gamer OSX, and welcome to my very first Adobe Muse tutorial. This tutorial will cover creating a horizontal menu with dividers between each, each menu item. Now, you might see an example like this on Apple where they have created a menu at the top with a divider between each item. The divider in the background is this very dark gray and if you mouse over the menu item, you'll each menu item, you'll find that the dark gray that they use is the exact same color as the divider. That gives an illusion of a depressed button, but you know, it's very subtle. Adobe uses a very similar option where you see a much more definable much more defined min, uh, divider but when you mouse over it the bottom stroke of the menu disappears so that you have one fluid menu that drops down from each menu item and as you can see this one stretches across the the entire length of the menu but the others only stretch as far as they need those are very easy to accomplish in Adobe Muse but when I went to look and find solutions for this there weren't any readily available so how did we accomplish this well let's start with an Adobe Muse with a brand new website so we'll click that brand new site and then use the defaults for this particular project we'll create a sample structure of a website which might have a products page and a reviews page about us and then a contact page that's pretty typical of, of most web websites out there uh, you might agree and it gives us a few pages within a menu to, to work with Adobe Muse dynamically creates your menu from that particular structure so let's drag out our header a little bit and create a header based on 125 pixels high if I can get that in there there we go now it has a white fill so we're just gonna choose something that's a little more pleasing to the eye and create some kind of contrast and we'll tile that you can tile it or if you tile it horizontally it might it could be a shorter image but in this case we'll say tile and cover that entire rectangular center I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit wider so we can see the entire canvas as, as we work here we go now this will create a nice looking uh, uh, area at the top as as you can see here but a lot of people nowadays are stretching their headers all the way across the page and they may actually decide to start that at the top of their page this is going to create a problem because then you see this very dark stroke along the top and the left and then a stroke around along the right you may not like that so just select your image right here and then select no stroke that will improve the image a lot and then uh, no stroke right here here we go and then in the case of most people you might want to even stretch that across the entire browser and you can accomplish this just simply by dragging it here and then what I would like to do because we don't want to see that top stroke either is we'll just bring that up right here and then we'll just drag our header about right here that looks good now let's grab our menu by default it's going to give us a gray menu that doesn't look very good but we'll stretch this menu out across the the entire page or at least within our our margins and we'll begin by creating a black fill this is going to give us our dividers and you can choose any color fill but for our purposes the black fill will look much better you have your different rollover states but let's start out with the normal rollover state and we've selected one button we're gonna change our fill to a different color Now that looks actually pretty decent 
but it looks a little boring. It works. See, it works, but it looks a little boring. So let's spruce it up a little bit. Let's change our fill to a gradient with a vertical gradient. And now all of a sudden our menu looks a lot better. We're going from our 50% gray to a black. Now if we preview it, it looks pretty good. But we don't have that feeling that we've pressed a button or pressed down on a button. To accomplish that, what we're going to do is then click over here on the rollover effect and then change our fill to exactly the reverse, the opposite of what we originally started with. So we're going to start with black and we're going to end on our 50% gray. Finally, our active menu item needs to change colors too. This gives everyone the knowledge of knowing what page they're on when they first begin. And I'm just going to try to find something that's halfway decent here. Um, we'll choose that one. And then we'll go preview. We've got our menu. You click, you mouse over home products. And now, as you can see, it gives you this 3D illusion that you've pressed inward or pressed downward on the button. If we choose a different page, now our page that we're on, our active page, has a different color, which is still a gradient from that color to black, and that shows up on any page. The last little thing that I would do with this is I would select, once again, the entire menu, and then I would click over on effects and add a, a shadow, a drop shadow. That makes it look pretty nice. See, now we have a little shadow effect. And the way that would look in a browser, if we click Preview in Browser, is, ta-da! Now our header will follow the length of the page, like so many websites do these days. And if you click on any other page, the menu items change. So there you have it in a nutshell. That is a way to create a horizontal menu with dividers and spruce it up a little bit. Thank you for watching my channel. If you liked this video, please click a thumbs up and share it across all of your social media outlets. Take care, everyone.